in here. We're starting. He made it. He got my back. He managed to roll me to my stomach. He's flattened me out, making this miserable, right? So the big thing here is I'm going to turn my head away from the choking elbow. If I turn my head towards it, I just put my suction in the chip, right? So don't do that, all right? So turn my head away and I control his hands with my hands because I don't want to get that get neck cramped. All right, I'm pinching my elbow in so he can't pull that hand out to start shooting for the choke on the other side. From here, I got to start getting my legs back in, all right? So I'm going to start looking to get my legs into the middle and opening this up to get underneath, all right? I want to get this leg under his leg on the same side that I'm looking to. Once this comes through, I'm coming up on my foot and that allows me to sit to my hip. Most of the time he's going to sit back because he realizes he's losing the position and now he can look to chair sit to go back to the back. So I bring my knee and connect it to my elbow so he can't step over right away. Right? From here, I'm looking, I'll pull this in and then I look to catch his elbow. Right? Once I have control of his elbow, I'm going to scissor my legs and come to my knees and now I just roll him over. All right, there's arm bars here. I can just go to twist your side, wherever you want to go once you get there. All right, one more time. All right, so he rolls me over. Right here, I'm looking away from the, the choking arm. I'm controlling his hands, pinching my elbow down. I look to get my legs to the inside. If he crosses his ankles, you know, it's going to be more difficult. All right, so I gotta find his heel, start opening the legs up and getting my legs to the inside so I can get under this foot. Once I get here, this foot comes up and I sit to my hip just like I'm doing a sit out, right? So we're here. Once we're here, I'm gonna pull, capture his elbow, switch my hips, roll him over. There's the arm bar, twist his side, hop to honey hole wherever you want to go, right? Let's do it. Three, two, one. <clears throat> when I get him here, don't reach back for this leg. I just gave him a crucifix. <laughs> if I want to go to twist your side, when I land here, right, I'm going to let go of the arm and turn both arms to this side go here. I'm not going to just reach with the one arm and put myself right into a bad spot again, right? So just make sure you don't do that. Make sense? Now we're going to play with, uh, we're going to divert and we're going to play with the, uh, the turtle position and then we're going to come back and maybe play with the body lock um, from the back too, but uh, I want to get in the turtle position because it's a position a lot of times you'll end up in and then you're not really sure what to do or where to go from there. Um, so just some, you know, some key principles and thoughts, right? So if Nick's attacking me and I land in my turtle, the first big thing is, is I'm putting my elbows on my hips and my hands against my face and my head is on the mat, right? My elbows are not on the mat. If my elbows are on the mat, he has hooks. Right? I cannot stop him from putting his feet in. Right? He can simply just jump on my back and put both hooks in right now if he wants. Right? Uh, there's nothing stopping him from getting his hooks. So when I go turtle, my elbows go to my hips. I come in tight, I'm posting on my head and my hands are to my face. The next big thing is as he's looking for his grips, I do not allow him to connect his arms underneath me. So as he's reaching and pulling, I'm preventing that from happening. If he gets a connection, now he has control of me, right? So if he can get his hands together, yeah, anywhere, right? He's got control, right? So I have to stop him from being able to get his hands together. So as he starts digging through there, I'm blocking all of that from happening, right? So we're doing this one next because this goes right in with what we were just doing. So if he's on this side, I will make this battle for a little bit and then I'll act like I'm, I'm being lazy. And as he's kind of hand fighting, I'll let my elbows slide away so that he reaches in, all right? Once he reaches in, I can grab his elbow. Now we're in that same spot. And I can 
roll him over. All right, so I'm just baiting him into this same little thing we were just doing, right? So again, elbows to the hips, head to the mat. I'm preventing him from connecting. I let him dig that arm in, make him think he wants something. I just connect and hold his elbow. Look like I'm not even grabbing his arm because I don't want to give him any hit that, that he messed up, right? I'm still fighting this hand so he can't get the connection and I'm just hooking his elbow. Now I can just sit out. I'm gonna, you know, go wherever I want to go from there. Does that make sense? Yep. All right, let's play with it. Three, two, one. So there's lots of stuff from here, like anywhere, but I'm just showing a couple of the things that I like to set up because they're both things that I bait for the person to give up and you know put themselves into a bad situation um, instead of me trying to force things to happen. Um, but it all starts with having that really good turtle where your, your elbows are into your hips and your hands are connected to your face. So you can stop the chokes, you can stop the hooks, you know, everything there. And then from there, I start leaning and moving and opening things up to try to get a reaction, right? So this time, we're starting the same way. Whichever side he's on, the start it becomes the same, whether I'm looking for him to reach in or whatever, is I, I get real tight on the side that's close to him and I open up a little bit on that far side. So he might reach in and then I might start looking for this and he realizes it's a trap, he pulls it back out, right? So I'll open it up again. And a lot of times they won't take the bait the second time with the arm. What they'll start to do is they start to look to circle to get their hook in. Right, he wants to come around and get his leg in there. Right, that's what he's looking for. So go back. As he circles though, his leg has to pass behind me. Right, so yeah, so go back. As it's passing around behind me and I open this up, I'm just looking to catch it right between my legs. Right, so that arm that my elbow was on my hip reaches through and I grab the leg. From here, I'm just pulling that in and I'm getting my hips above his knee. And now we're in on a leg entanglement. We can go heel hooks, we can go straight ankles, wherever you want to go from there, right? <clears throat> so again, we're here, I open this up. He doesn't take the bait and he starts to come around. Sometimes as he comes around, I miss the first leg, that's okay. If he brings that first leg around and he gets there, I'll stay tight and I'll catch the second leg. Right? So, and I can come back into the same scenario. So, but as I open that, as I open this side up, I'm already like turning, like I was gonna do a forward roll, which gives me a little more length to grab his leg. If I stay right here, it's kind of hard. So I just turn and get my shoulder to the mat. And now I can look to grab that. And then as soon as I grab it, I'm already set up to roll. Right? So one more time. So we're here, I open that side up, he starts coming around, we catch, we roll through, and then wherever we end up on the leg exchange, right? So, you know, so the, the trap is the same for, for whether I'm looking for the arm or I'm looking for the leg, so it's really simple. I'm just waiting for his reaction, and then I'm playing off of that reaction, right? So let's play with the, the leg entanglement roll through. Let's do one more time. Yep. <laughs> So again, we're here, I open this up. As he comes through, I catch that leg. And we'll, if I can get the knee, that's what I ultimately want. If all I can get is the ankle, that's fine too. I'll make it work. But if I ultimately, if I can catch that knee, I know I'm gonna be able to catch his knee line. And then from here, you know, it's just wherever I can take it for my finish, right? He might start trying to roll his way out of this. Yeah, and I just follow him and find the finish on the roll through, right? Let's do it, three, two, one. When I'm playing here and I open just a little bit, if they're not biting, I will like open it all the way up. All right, and now there's zero chance of them getting anything on this side, so they really have to come around, all right? And that will entice them to start making that move and it starts opening those things up for me. All right, so yeah, so it's one of those things where as you get comfortable with the position, you'll learn, you know, kind of different spots where you can play it and kind of make it more 
advantageous for yourself, right? So, you know, so as you get to that turtle and play with it, you know, kind of see, you know, what happens. To get good at it while live rolling, you got to put yourself there a lot, right? So, yeah, so it's one of those things, if you don't get there that often, you're going to forget all about this stuff. You know, so if you want to work on it and get better at it, you got to put yourself in the turtle a lot. You know, and then from the turtle, then you can start playing with all these options. Yeah, you know, it's like anything else. The more reps you get, the better you get at it. So, Signed with some of these when you're playing with them, because next we're going to go over the crucifix. Like it's another one you don't get in that often. We're going to talk about how to deal with it. Um, you know, but again, like if you don't get there that often, you don't drill it, you don't do anything, you're going to get there and go, oh crap, what did coach say to do when I get here? All right? So sometimes you got to give up positions and let people do those things to you so then you can work out of it, right? That's why when, you know, I talk about when you're live rolling in here, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you win the live roll. No one's going to remember tomorrow or next week or two weeks or a month from now. It doesn't matter. Right, we're trying to get better, you know, which means sometimes you got to put yourself and let people take positions on you that you wouldn't normally let them get to so that you can play with getting out of those positions, countering those positions and everything else, right? Yeah, like it's easy to prevent people from, you know, have a really good guard and prevent people from ever getting to your back, but then your back defense might be crap because you never actually work on it. Right, so then if you go to a tournament and they have EBI overtime and now somebody's on your back, they tap you out in 10 seconds, now you just lost the match because you never work on your back defense, right? That's one of the, the things that came up when EBI started, is a lot of these world-class black belts were whining and complaining because they're like, well, I would never let you get there. Right, so let's see how good you are when someone actually does. Right? You gotta be good at all these positions because eventually you're gonna run into somebody who is good enough to get to your back. And if you don't know how to defend it, and the only thing you've ever done is try to stop people from getting there, you're gonna die, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah, it's one of those things when you're rolling, some nights when I come in and I roll with people, like I let people put me in bad positions to work out of. I let people pass my guard, I let people mount me, I let them take my back, I let them do these things to work out of these positions to get reps in those spots, right? It's the same with all the stuff we're going over. If all the only time you play with this stuff is when we go over it for a few minutes in class, you're gonna forget it. And then you're not gonna be any good at it. And when it happens you know, live, you're gonna be sitting trying to think and remember what it was you were supposed to do. And they've already you know, moved on to the next position or the next attack and you missed your opportunity, right? And you'll work on this today when you're rolling and stuff, try to put yourself in some of these positions so you can play with these options and work your way out, right? Cool. Crucifix. Mm -hmm. Right? So however we got here doesn't really matter, but we ended up in this crucifix, right? So um, so when we're in the crucifix, the, the first thing to, to start thinking about with any position that I'm trying to get out of is what is he not controlling? Because that's what I have to use to get out. Right now, what is he not controlling? Hips. Hips and my legs, right? He's got my, you know, this arm with both hands. He's got this arm with both legs. So which grip would be easier to, to work your way out of? This one or this one? How many people say hands? The white belts. How many people say legs? It's the legs. You don't have thumbs on your feet, right? He can control my wrist with his thumbs. He has a tighter grip here. All he's doing is pinching with his thighs here. There's a, that's a lot of flesh for me to kind of move through, even on even on somebody like Nick. <laughs> so, you know, it's a way that I can work my way out of this because he doesn't have thumbs to control me with. I don't have to break the thumb grip and get my arm out. All I got to do is get my arm out, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my hips to make this arm stronger. I do that by bringing my hips to my arm because right now when I'm like this, I'm not strong. Like I'm not it's gonna be really hard to do anything, right? So all I do is I swing my hips towards, towards those feet, 
Now, obviously, I've got to keep control of this so he doesn't attack this, right? But now that we're here, I can start seeing Juan what kind of grip he has on my arm with his legs so that I can start making my way out. So one of the options, depending on how tight I feel like this is, is I can just try to limp arm my way out. So I can just simply turn and start pulling my elbow through, right? This works a lot of times. And then once I get my elbow through, now I can make the turn to start breaking this grip and start making a, you know, a switch on him, right? <clears throat> so again, we're here. So I swing and I turn, I connect to make sure he doesn't come over me right here. And then when I decide that I wanna go for this, I'm gonna break my grip. I'm gonna extend to make this straight so it can slide through. It's never gonna slide through when it's bent, right? I point my fingers even, don't make a fist because then your fist gets stuck. All right, I want to make this as straight as I can, I can. And then I start shrimping and pulling my elbow in. Once my elbow is in, I'm going to make this swing back and I'm pushing this top elbow. Now that this is opened up, my elbow comes inside his elbow. My hand goes to his wrist. And now I've just reversed this whole position. And I can now play with this. And now he can do the rest. All right, so now he can swing his legs. He can whip on his way out. Turn, push the elbow, elbow inside, make the switch. Nope, 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 keep coming, turning this way. Yep, and then now he has, all right? So it's an endless loop back and forth. switch it up and go side track. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, but you can just make this endless loop back and forth, going back and forth to that crucifix and finding your way out just to get a bunch of reps in, right? So take it slow first, kind of play with it, getting that arm out, reversing that Kimura, um, and then kind of start speeding it up as you get the hang of it, right? Let's do it, three, two, one. So it's basically like doing a kamikaze. Does it look like yeah, that? Yeah, like right? So, um, so yeah, there's this little bicep slicer here. It's basically a kamikaze on the arm. I mean, for people who have done the sneaky kamikaze, right? So the, the way I get out of this is the same, right? The only difference is, is like he's trying to pull my arm in to, to, to finish this. So when I make this turn, I connect to my hand and I push so he can't bend that in, right? And then now, like keep it tight. Now it's about trying to wiggle this through. So the nice thing about him being attached to my arms instead of my legs is my shoulders have pretty good flexibility and so do my wrists. So I can start wiggling and working my hand through. And then once my hand is through, now I can pull my elbow up again. Come back. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? So that's why I turn and face it too. One is it makes me stronger, makes it easier for me to suck my elbow in, but it also allows me to look at what kind of entanglement he has on my arm. And so I can weave my hand through, right? And then suck it, suck it in, spin, reverse it, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Any other questions on that? There's more like a question about finishing that one choke, one crucifix. The basic choke? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can go over that. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, <laughs> right. So we land here. So the, the choke he's talking about is the one where you come through with a single arm and you finish, right? So the key to this is when I get to this finish, I need to be here. I need my head next to his head because it's just like a rear naked choke, right? So when I finish my rear naked choke, I need my, my chin on his shoulder, right? So where people go wrong is they'll try to catch it and their head's way back here, right? And like now, like I don't, I can't get under his chin. I don't have the angle. I can't finish this. Like he's, he doesn't like it, but he's not gonna tap to this, right? So I get my head low, right? When I'm here, I control his hand with my hand. I'm not holding his arm. I grab his hand. So now I can control his arm with one hand. If I just grab here, he can just straighten his arm. 
right? If I grab his hand, I own his arm, right? Now, I take my thumb and I just connect it to my first knuckle and it makes that nice little point right there, right? So I'm taking that and I'm going right behind his ear and I slide it down and under his chin. And I go to his shoulder and I catch that. I cover it with my chin and now I just pull that, that elbow back for the finish. Does that make sense? So, you know, so that's, that's how we finish that choke. So the big thing is, is like, I, if I'm way out here, it's gonna be hard to do, right? And that's why when I, if I want that choke, like I'll pull him in with my knees, get my chin to his shoulder. Now I can sink it in and finish. Right? Cool. You guys want to play with that for a minute? Yes. Yes? Let's do it. Three, two, one.